بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر ویورز السلام علیکم آئی ایم یو ہوز فیصل رضا خان اینڈ یو آر واچنگ فور سائٹ ویورز پاکستان ہیز امینسلی سیکریفائسڈ اٹس پریشیس لائف ریسورسز سوشل فیبرک اینڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ پاکستان ہیز گیون ریفیوز ٹو ایٹ لیسٹ فور ملین افغان ریفیوجیز ون پوائنٹ سیون ملین انلیگل افغان سٹیزنس ایٹ دا پاکستان سوائل بٹ ان ریٹرن پاکستان از فیسنگ terrorism smuggling and now the water aggression from afghan soil pakistan and afghanistan share at least nine rivers in between which contributes 18.3 million acre feet of water kabul river alone has the water flow of at least 16.5 million acre feet in which chatral river which originates from pakistan that contributes 8.5 million acre feet of water kabul river is the single source of 16 to 17 percent of water which helps to irrigate at least 50,000 hectares of land in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province in Pakistan. But concerns are that India is working by design to curtail that Pakistani water from the Kabul river to help by helping Afghanistan in building or construction of dams, not one but dozens of them. And the recent example is the Shatut Dam, which is going to store 146 million cubic meter of water, and that would be the source of uh, water supply to at least 2 million residents of Kabul. Along with that, it will irrigate at least 4,000 hectares of land. Now, building dam is not an issue, but when it is assisted by an enemy country, that is again. always a source of contention for the western water uh, western rivers and curtailing pakistani water from its own soil and from the occupied territory of uh, jammu and kashmir now these are the concerns which pakistan has and pakistan raises these concerns at the highest level with kabul as well uh, to talk on this important subject we have in our studios dr wasim ishaq he is the senior analyst most welcome to you sir Thank you. Uh, Saira Ijaz, she is also the senior analyst. Most welcome to you. And uh, online, uh, Brigadier Retired Hamid Rashid Malik is joining us. Most welcome to you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, first question that is very important in, with regards to what India is actually doing. What do you think about India's aggressive designs against Pakistan? First, by using uh, the land of the third country for terrorism. Now, uh, it is uh, originating water aggression against Pakistan from the same country. Faisal, thank you. Uh, today, Pakistan is facing again a two-front war scenario. As we used to perceive somewhere in 90s when Soviet expansion was on cards. However, Pakistan as a state tried to handle all these situations pragmatically. But ever since Modi regime has come in power in India and since last two consecutive tenures, apart from creating a situation on its eastern front and especially I'm talking from the water perspective, They have not only violated Indus Water Treaty several times, in violation of that they have been constructing a lot of dams in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. So depriving Pakistan from its legitimate right and in violation of Indus Water Treaty because Pakistan was guaranteed the three western rivers water into the Pakistani river and system. Definitely into the Indus Water Treaty, Indus, Indus according Water. to the Indus Water Treaty. However, yes. When we have seen that uh, in last 20 years of war and terrorism when there was a pro-India mm -hmm. friendly government in Afghanistan, India tried to again build bridges with that government by way of soft power. So India invested about 3 billion US dollars in infrastructure development as well as in hydropower production and by way of construction of about 12 uh, dams are on the cards. In which the most important is the Shahtu Dam which is now being uh, uh, considered and reviewed because that's the one which is affecting the Kabul River's flow inside Pakistan. And if you can link back Prime Minister Modi's uh, quotation where he said in a gathering that Pakistan will be deprived from even a drop of water. So India is working on a water war since then, depriving Pakistan's water share from Indus Water Treaty flowing into Pakistan from That Jammu was Kashmir. also reiterated at the Afghan soil during the inauguration of the Salma Dam. Yes, sure. So, and similarly, depriving Pakistan from its legitimate right from the Kabul River. And see, unfortunately, the Pakistan's geographical space is so located that it's a lower riparian. Wow. So from both accounts, 
the lower riparian is suffering and that is the latest weapon with India hmm. to exploit Pakistan's economy, to frustrate Pakistan's social fabric as well as to create a situation of almost civil war which India has been trying to and planning since long. So Saira, Saira, as uh, Dr. Wasim said that uh, it, this uh, gives uh, some sort of a uh, question or a question arises that why India is fueling this uh, water terrorism from Afghanistan, why? In my opinion, the regional hydro diplomacy is needed more than ever. Uh, our diplomatic uh, focus now should be on water and hydro related problems because without that as Alama Iqbal said that Afghanistan is the heart of Asia. If there is peace in Afghanistan, there is peace in the entire Asia, be it Central but Asia, be South Asia. we are propagating for peace, we are uh, yeah. developing it, we are uh, uh, we uh, striving for that peace from the last many years but it's Afghanistan which is not ready to cooperate yes. and these uh, rivers, if they, these are originating even from Pakistan, but uh, after uh, now uh, many through, through Afghanistan that is coming here, I am talking about that in why India is inflicting water terrorism. Because the India is trying to, you know, uh, circle Pakistan from all aspects, be it uh, terrorism, be it uh, online hate speech, be it hydro diplomacy, be it uh, uh, in terms of uh, Yadav case, uh, we have seen that we, you know, by uh, spreading terrorism in all means. So that's the, their, you know, ultimate goal to, you know, circle Pakistan in all possible ways. And it's one of the tactics of, out of that. And I, that's what I was trying to highlight here is that Pakistan should fo focus, uh, should keep trying on hydro diplomacy with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say, as uh, Dr. Wasim has mentioned about the Indus Water Treaty, but there is a positive thing about Indus Water Treaty is there that it has survived many wars, two major wars, big skirmishes and the continued so aggression. Do you think that Pakistan has Pakistan never ever initiated any sort of hydro Pakistan diplomacy with Afghanistan? Did, did. But Afghanistan, as usual, was or is always reluctant to do it. But we should keep trying and we should, you know, use now other means. We should involve international players in it because India is now, you know, going way ab above because uh, uh, the Kabul River is, you know, uh, providing water to the uh, KPK and the, which is the food basket of, of the entire uh, Peshawar Valley and the uh, Char Sadda, Noshera and Peshawar. They all are, you know, get, uh, are dependent on water from the Kabul River. So now it's a matter of a human cri uh, crisis and we should be very uh, you know t uh, take on this issue on an urgent and priority basis with Afghanistan. By the Otherwise way this time it's the Afghan request not the Indian initiative. So it means that Indian earlier initiative taken in 2015 mm. was shelved but yes. this was taken by a Kabul. That's, so, that's so, my point was. So uh, Dr. Wasim, when, when we are talking about uh, uh, this overall picture uh, that uh, India is going to invest at least in dozens of dams there, in uh, uh, particularly at the Kabul River. So, do you think it's by design? Yes, I, I foresee that way because there are two aspects. It's not sh solely Afghanistan's property, the Kabul River. 70% hmm. of water is uh, actually fed into Kabul River from the Chitral River. Hmm. So, from that perspective, we have also have a sovereignty over Kabul River. But then, what India has try to actually convince the Afghan government that by doing so, it will create a leverage, mm. political leverage and a diplomatic leverage with the Pakistani government. Mm. And as the country is now uh, struggling from its economy and more than 30 percent of Pakistan economy is dependent on the agri agro products. So this is by doing just one action, India is actually contemplating to achieve quite a few objectives. One, Pakistan isolating Pakistan. Second, uh, trying to create a dent in Pakistan's economy. Third, trying to create a lot of unemployment because if the agriculture becomes redundant, it will create about more than 2 million unemployment in Pakistan right away. So from all these perspectives, it is a very calibrated strategy by India as it appears on ground. And therefore, I feel that there is a, uh, a firm nexus between the incumbent Afghan government and the, Mud uh, and the Mudi regime. Definitely. Your point well taken. Uh, uh, Brigadier Tait, Hamid, when we are talking about... Uh, uh, Afghanistan and uh, uh, its policies and its uh, regimes going on. Do you not think that uh, Karzai and Ghani government, then the uh, Afghan interim authority, 
uh, they are doing the same uh, with respect to Pakistan in connection with India. Do you not think that the, there is no change in Afghanistan, no change in Kabul? We need to understand that with Afghanistan, we have a very difficult relationship. And the diplomatic maneuvers, whatever have been there, has not been able to achieve the desired results. When uh, in the Doha agreement, Pakistan supported the Taliban to have negotiations with the uh, Americans and with the uh, forces there for the withdrawal and also for the transition of its government to the new farm government in Afghanistan. But what we see that uh, the Afghan government at that time fell like uh, the cords. And because of uh, the smooth transition not there, what we see also that, as you also highlighted, that the mindset against the Pakistan or the question against the Pakistan. On one hand, the Afghan, they believe that Pakistan should be very uh, friendly country to them, very uh, warm relationship be provided by Pakistan in the shape of Agwan present trade as hosting of the Agwans. But on the other hand, we see when it comes to the Agwan to pay back, they have not been very gracious. And now the present issue of the hydro aggression, we say, or we say that they are using their river as a weapon against Pakistan. We need to understand that it is the uh, now Taliban government which want that Pakistan should bend down to their demands and they are using the uh, weapon of the hydro uh, dam being built on the Kabul River to make Pakistan accede to their demands. So, uh, uh, Brigadier Hamid, when uh, we are talking about uh, building dams, you know that uh, it's not an issue because across the world it's a, it's a phenomena that every country builds dams for their needs. but. Uh, uh, building dams with the purpose to uh, deprive one country, a low riparian country, from the water flow or uh, from agriculture, from uh, creating food insecurity or something like that. Uh, how do you see uh, this Shatu dam build, building uh, uh, by India uh, in, in Afghanistan as a non-traditional threat to Pakistan? You are very right in categorizing this building of dam as a non-traditional threat. Yes, it is. And it will harm the regional stability as well as the security in this region. And it may arise as a source of conflict between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Building of dam is not controversial. What, what we see that as per the UN uh, conventions, as per the number of treaties in the world, there are the, in last 50 years, there are about 150 treaties where the upper and lower riparian agreed, mutually agreed to utilize the water. But here in this case of building of Shatut Dam, what we see that Afghanistan is violating all the international norms about the use of water by the lower riparian. And one more aspect which we need to understand that why India is so gracious to build that dam for Afghan. It is not for Afghanis. Let me clear the audience here that this is a sort of coercion, a sort of hegemony being showed by the Indian against Pakistan. Uh, Dr. Vaseem, uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, building dams or uh, some sort of water reservoirs, eastern and western neighbors, they are united uh, against Pakistan to uh, build such kind of facility over there. Do you think that uh, this is uh, uh, going to be a real-time water offensive against Pakistan? Yes, as it appears on ground, it, it looks like that way. However, we have to keep in mind the history as well. Historically, Afghanistan and India had enjoyed reasonably good relations, whether it was the Soviet times, whether it was Babur Karmel's time, or even whether it was a slight destabilization during Taliban regime, or the 20 years of war on terrorism. Mm -hmm. During all these processes, Afghanistan and India had enjoyed a reasonably good relations. So from that perspective, the chemistry of uh, Afghan government and the chemistry of uh, Indian government, they are generally on the equal footings. So therefore, not a very big issue.
for the Indian government to reposition and readjust whosoever government comes in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So from the water aggression perspective, we have seen that Pakistan is the worst affected by effects of climate change. We have seen drought in Pakistan for years and uh, in one part of the year and we have seen flooding in the same year and we are experiencing this since last two to three years. Mm -hmm. However, we have also witnessed Indian water aggression in terms when there was no flooding in Pakistan, India had opened up the water mm -hmm. in our eastern rivers. So therefore flooding the entire Pakistan where as, as per the actual uh, rain schedule, there was hardly any rain inside Pakistan. So having done this successfully and destroying Pakistan's economy, dunting Pakistan economy to an extent, India wants to replicate the same thing and offering its services to Afghan government. And why Afghan government, the timing of this is very important because we have now decided as a nation that all those who are illegal uh, Afghan refugees should be sent back honorably to their homes. So therefore, this is a very irritating, probably irritating point for the incumbent Afghan government. So they want to create a leverage and they want to have something shown to their public that they want to take Pakistan also uh, pay in the same coins. So therefore, this is probably the strongest point where the India can help and can help easily with lot more effects to be created on ground and still remaining in the background that it is the right of the sovereign country to decide anything which is in their national interest. So as Dr. Vaseem said that uh, it is going to be irritating for Pakistan. So how do you see when, uh, let's suppose that uh, Shatu Dam is constructed uh, and uh, they have the accumulated water over there and how much uh, it, it would impact Pakistan when Kabul River gets the lowest flows towards Pakistan? It will create lots of problem. Experts are mentioning this at various forums that uh, by building and the unequal water distribution between Pakistan and Afghanistan would, you know, lead to water shortage, water pollution, mass human migration. There are many other uh, humanitarian crises can be, you know, uh, risen from uh, out of that unequal, uh, uh, unequal distribution of water. There will be huge, uh, you know, uh, foods insecurity will be there, food crisis uh, will be there. So I think that uh, we should, uh, that's what I was earlier also mentioning that we need to take this issue on priority basis and pa Afghanistan needs to be realized that uh, it cannot create this disbalance within the region with the help of India to curtail Pakistan for some other diplomatic and political leverages or point scoring. So uh, over here, uh, international involvement of international bodies and uh, following the international laws uh, and regional uh, uh, laws as well, they, because there are number of um, laws for water distributions are there. Uh, and I think uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan water treaty could be, you know, materialized, which Afghanistan is definitely uh, is reluctant right now to, you know, to come to discuss it and sit on table regarding this, but it will create a massive problem within the region for Pakistan particularly, and it will create instability at a regional level. Well elaborated. Dr. Vaseem, uh, as uh, Saira said that uh, Char Sadda, Noshera and Peshawar, uh, at least 50,000, more than 50,000 hectares of land, uh, agricultural land is uh, uh, irrigated because of the Kabul river. Then uh, we are uh, uh, having uh, a uh, facility, uh, dam facility that is the Varsak Dam, getting water from the Kabul River. 250 megawatt of electricity we are getting for uh, at least for Peshawar and rest of the cities. So how do you see when inflows would be lesser, uh, that affects the power generation as well, accumulation of water, availability of water, clean drinking water for the residents, along with that the agriculture. In my analysis, it is not only a particular area of Peshawar or a small area of KPK. I would say that it would create a lot of impact for the entire Indus Basin. No doubt. Because no doubt. around 16,000 uh, acre feet. Because that ends up into the Indus in River. Indus yes. River. So the entire basin would be affected. And this 250 megawatt, certainly it, it, it will be reduced, but 250 megawatt is not a big at the national level. However, see, all the uh, issues which we are actually facing through the Indus River system, whereby our economy because of the impact of climate change has already reduced to a large extent and since india has successfully done one format of india is targeting actually the indus river basin indus river basin and since india uh, successfully demonstrated the 
disputed in, in the uh, Indian held Kashmir, they created lot of dams and then they were able to justify to the international community. So that has given lot of incentive to India to replicate the same on Kabul river. And as we see probably the international environment today may not be very favorable to just go ahead. But since mm. this agreement mm. was done before might be that India incentivizes to uh, execute it on ground. But I think still there's, there could be a way out for uh, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan to work mutually on the water sharing, some sort of water sharing agreement as we did for Indus Water Treaty in case of India and to a large extent it is still a success story. So in such case we should now start working on having a some sort of bilateral TT with Afghanistan with respect to at least the share of water flow to Pakistan and to Afghanistan and even if by certain aspects they want to go ahead with this Shatu Dam, we need to involve third party like the World Bank as it is guaranteed in this water TT to involve and make sure that some sort of uh, imbalance should not occur in as, as a result of the construction of that dam. However, we should at all levels try to convince the uh, Afghan government not to go ahead with it at the cost of Pakistan. So it should not be a zero sum mm. between Pakistan and Afghanistan on account of this water distribution. Okay. Uh, uh, Saira, when we are uh, talking about uh, India's assistance or Delhi's assistance to Kabul regarding the dam construction, so uh, do you think that it is going to be uh, a continuous source of tension or uh, could have uh, the uh, impact or uh, essence to create a huge conflict? Definitely, definitely. There is no point. Uh, there is no second opinion about it. Uh, India is, you know, following the infrastructure uh, Afghanistan and it is, you know, maintaining its footsteps there since the early uh, tw uh, 2000, uh, 2000s onwards. And uh, not only dams, it ha uh, India is, you know, investing in human development. Okay. India has, uh, uh, you know, is involving in many infrastructure uh, mega projects within Afghanistan. Afghanistan and particularly after the fall of Kabul uh, 2000, uh, 2021, India is quite very active there and this is all the signs of you know instability and already tensed situation. They are making the situation further tensed uh, be between uh, Pakistan and India is also one of the main factors behind the tensed uh, situation uh, or bilateral or creating relations. creating some sort of a rift between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, uh, and Afghanistan. It's a big major issue so, and uh, Dr. Uh, I would also like oh, to oh, add oh, one last please. point and, and don't forget to add the factor of containing and to you know showing its uh, strength to China India's uh, one of the major uh, diplomatic and strategic aspect is also to you know um, uh, showing some strategic leverage or uh, to you know put down China as well within Afghanistan well uh, well elaborated uh, Dr. Vaseem uh, again a prisoner dilemma that uh, uh, how much imperative it is for Pakistan to engage Afghanistan on this water issue particularly I, I think our engagement should be constructive engagement and not only on one issue water issue we should have been discussing actually range of issues on how to improve bilateral relations how to improve livelihood of people how to actually ensure good border control and good border management and then cross border terrorism etc all these issues should be discussed in a comprehensive manner but however since we are now facing one uh, very pressing issue that is the distribution of water yes so therefore if it is not possible at the bilateral level i think we have another leverage in, uh, 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 by way of china which is engaging also at uh, bilateral level and also at the multilateral uh, forums with afghanistan and china has also offered afghanistan the inclusion of cpac mm. so therefore we can use the uh, trilateral forum of pakistan china and afghanistan, afghanistan to resolve this issue and I am still optimistic that uh, these uh, issues can be resolved and negotiated. Uh, so, uh, uh, Brigadier uh, Retired Hamid, when we are talking about Pakistan, Afghanistan engagement on water issues, how do you see uh, whether uh, Kabul would be ready to uh, share with us any sort of technical details like uh, design of the dam and its capacity and how they are going to utilize that water, any specifications related to that if Pakistan approach Kabul? In the past, in 2006, the World Bank tried that Afghanistan and Pakistan should come on some agreement about their water sharing because Kabul is a trans-border river. And here also I want to highlight that because of the Afghan not ready to have any conclusive agreement, those talks could not progress well. 
here another aspect which i want to highlight that afghanistan has five cross border rivers that also flows from afghanistan to the different countries like into central asia and also to iran and to pakistan and it why it is only kabul on which india is interested and also highlighted by my colleagues that this is one of the way of coercion this is one of the way of their sinister and hegemonic mindset of india against pakistan apart from the indus water treaty they want that there should not be any uh, progress or economic activity in pakistan and for uh, and afghanistan soil was earlier used for terrorism and now the afghanistan soil is being used for water aggression and this is very sorry state of affairs and in the present mindset of the afghan government what i think uh, they will not be ready to talk and share such details because what they feel if they will uh, share such details and they will not be able to then get much advantage from india so they are using it as a leverage uh, to lure in india to have some development in afghanistan and at the same time they are trying that this should be used as a tool of coercion as a tool of their diplomatic maneuver against pakistan so that pakistan accedes to the afghan demands and the recently two or three uh, events which have showed us that afghan government is not very conducive and very friendly to pakistan interests so uh, brigadier retired hamid you don't see any sort of a will uh, within kabul or uh, afghan interim authority to uh, go on uh, with the negotiations on water issues in short time i don't think that because if they had such mindset they know about the international treaties they know about the international norms and they also know about the indus water treaty also that they are supposed to share the technical details about the height about the design about the flow inflow how much inflow how much uh, capacity of storage it will have and these things are also available to pakistan and that is why pakistan showed concern that as per the international rules and laws the lower librarian needs to be engaged it needs to be made sure that the storage of water will not affect the uh, irrigation or the flow of water to the lower riparian country and in this context what we see then afghan government is not very um, i think in a mind to share such detail with pakistan and take pakistan on board being the lower riparian country thank you very much uh, brigadier retired hamid rashid malik sahib for being with us online and for your candid views as well thank you very much so nice of you uh, dr wasim when we are talking about negotiations with afghanistan on water issues there was uh, uh, a sheer effort by the united states of america during the obama administration in 2011 as well but unfortunately that was failed that was for uh, bilateral agreement on water uh, sharing matters so how do you see that because uh, if we initiate something because the same psyche is prevailing in kabul unfortunately what was happening that in those 20 years of uh, us engagement inside afghanistan and war on terrorism the government was not a representative government of afghanistan this is how the majority of afghan people felt that way that's why it could not sustain when the us uh, uh, left afghanistan even the karzai and the ashraf ghani time yes because the moment uh, us forces withdrew the government collapsed overnight so that means it was just around kabul and collapse in hours in in hours so that means whatever decisions they were trying to take or they were taking they were not on behalf of the people of afghanistan it was just from their personal behalf hmm. therefore they were not enduring decisions so in that context i think we still have a lot of room to maneuver around we need to engage the current afghan government while when we are talking it's not a hostile government against pakistan yes we have differences on certain issues and differences can be resolved through diplomacy and through constructive engagement and if it is not possible on bilateral level then we should go over the multilateral forums and we may also use the good offices of china as a trilateral forum and i think china is more than willing to actually help and facilitate because china's own investment in copper and mines of over 2 billion us dollars 
then China's own offer of uh, joining CPAC and China's own commitment for the economic development of Afghanistan, taking it away from that poverty and power, uh, all those issues. So, uh, Saira, as uh, Dr. Wasim said, how do you see the Chinese influence on Afghanistan regarding uh, such type of issues, even the border issues, the water issues and all other issues to resolve with Pakistan? That's a one silver lining which I uh, think that it's there because China has also hugely invested in Afghanistan in, uh, in the infrastructure projects, in the human, they have given them lots of aid during their tough time in uh, India uh, China is very much interested in the you know natural resources of Afghanistan as well so I think that's the one diplomatic front we uh, or the you know opening we have and we should uh, engage with China regarding this water and hydro diplomacy with Afghanistan China could be of a very useful um, help to us uh, when it comes to you know convince Afghanistan uh, to sit on the table regarding particularly this water issue. So when we are talking about the negotiations, uh, particularly on the water issue, because this is the technical issue and uh, um, uh, Pakistan's Ministry of Water is actually dealing with all issues or uh, the Indus Water Commissioner. So how do you see that whether Pakistan is prepared uh, uh, to have negotiations with Afghanistan on water issues particularly? That's a very important uh, aspect. We have to prepare ourselves. If the Pakistan doesn't have, uh, so far doesn't have any plan, then that's the dilemma. That's the time. That's what media is playing its role. And, uh, and the other sane voices within the state of Pakistan are now raising this issue. So the concerned officials, concerned ministries should take up this issue on priority basis. They should have a plan. They should have engaged the scientists, hydrologists, and the other international uh, lawyers, international law lawyers lawyers who are experts in water issues, they should engage it. And we have to have the, you know, prepare a plan so that we can put it in front of the China uh, to, you know, help us in that way. And we should also convince our Afghan, uh, our neighbor Afghanistan. So because you, I am, as I have already mentioned that it, if uh, unequal distribution in the water shortage will be a great human, humanitarian crisis, it's the biggest non-traditional security threat if we don't cater it right now because these are the signs India is, is has been geared up totally against us they are doing their part now it's our turn to prepare ourselves we have to have a proper strategy proper diplomat at all levels be it at diplomatic front be it at uh, uh, you know the strategic uh, uh, the planning of this whole thing we need to have a proper plan that's very important uh, dr wasim when uh, there was an issue between Pakistan and India, although Indus Water Treaty has not resolved mo major issues between Pakistan and India, like Baglehar Dam, like Tulbul uh, Navigation Project and all others. So, uh, Dr. Vasim, how do you see the World Bank as a guarantor uh, uh, regarding Pakistan and India's uh, water issues now between Pakistan and Afghanistan? What uh, do you think any sort of a role is there with the World Bank to be as a guarantor over there? Yes, I think, uh, first of all, let me uh, give you a bit of uh, resume of Indus Water Treaty that s more than 50 years, it has actually stood the test of times. Yes, no doubt. In no all doubt ways. About that. Yes. And it has been, I think, a uh, success story in case of India-Pakistan bilateral relations it as is, well. It is. So, the World Bank Forum and Pakistan always fought its case very effectively at World Bank Forum and tried to convince India that whatever they wanted to do in Kashmir could not do it so freely as India had actually declared. Mm. And if that process was not fought at the World Bank level, probably India would have now inundated the entire area with a lot of uh, dams in uh, Kashmir. As they said, the Pakistan will be deprived in a single drop of water. So that strategy didn't work so far. So from that perspective, I think our all the uh, responsible institutions were very effectively involved over there. And I'm sure they must be working on uh, dealing with Afghanistan and putting up our case to the World Bank. They should have been prepared and they must be working on this. So World Bank can play a good mediatory role mm. as it has always done in case of conflict resolution in case of India and Pakistan. And despite that 65 war, 71 war and 1999 uh, certain standoff. So mm. all in all those cases, the 
not only that IWT has actually withstood, the World Bank also came a long way in as a facilitation role. So in the same context, this success story can be replicated in case of uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And I'm sure if we can come up with some sort of uh, agreement, hopefully this issue of uh, uh, depriving Pakistan from every drop of water from Kabul River can be handled in a very One pragmatic question manner. which is from uh, both of you that uh, uh, how do you see Pakistan as a socially, ec economically, uh, democratically or uh, politically uh, stable and uh, progressive along with that uh, defense wise very strong in that relation when it comes to the conflicts even it's the traditional conflict or the non-traditional conflict. How do you see Dr. Wasim? While Pakistan is a very peace loving country and we believe in peaceful coexistence and good relations with all the countries in the region and the world. However, we cannot compromise on our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Pakistan is very much prepared and very much capable of defending itself. However, all those rights which Pakistan must get, we have to keep working for that day and night and at all international and national forums. So therefore, this is one opportunity where Pakistan can test its diplomatic uh, muscles. And therefore, I can still, I'm very hopeful that by constructive engagement using bilateral, multilateral and trilateral forums, this issue can be resolved in a highly pragmatic manner. Would you like to add something? Else? Pakistan's foreign policy is of friendliness and cooperation. And we have proved it since our since beginning and since 1947. Uh, but I think we need to more work on our the, on our in, in internal socio-political stability and economic stability. But when it comes to uh, at diplomatic front and defense dif uh, aspect, I think Pakistan needs not to worry about that. We have highly trained diplomats. Our defense is very strong. Uh, but I think we need to work on these. Uh, some uh, We have to take certain issues on priority basis, like this hydro diplomacy with Afghanistan, and to tackle uh, this India's aggressive plans towards us. So, uh, Dr. Vaseem, one question is very important which is uh, always uh, uh, clicking whenever some sort of a non-traditional threat comes. Uh, again, a non-traditional -tra threat is threatening a non-traditional threat. That is uh, the climate change uh, which is uh, uh, with the river flows which are uh, going to be lesser along with that when there is a human activity, construction of dams or all that. So, how do you see that replicate some sort of a conflicts uh, em uh, emerging from the non-traditional threats? Actually, nowadays, I think non-traditional threats have actually surpassed the traditional threats. Yes. So, in that kind of context, the human security has become the utmost important. And we as a government, Pakistani government, is mindful of that human security. And it does not requ uh, require only a single nation's actually efforts to mitigate those uh, negative effects of non-traditional security, it is a collaborative effort. And the entire international community actually acknowledges this. And there are actually a lot of uh, the, the great powers, the regional powers, everybody is actually ready to come and uh, work together for combating these non-traditional security threats. So I think just need uh, active diplomacy and constructive engagement at the right forums, which we are quite capable of doing it. And I think if we just uh, reactivate our those diplomatic uh, maneuvers, hopefully we should be able to handle all these issues in a befitting manner. And definitely, and definitely. And when we are talking about such type of issues, it is important that uh, 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 Pakistan, as you have rightly mentioned about that it's the responsibility of the media to highlight these issues so that the uh, concerned authorities must have to take right actions at the right, right time, time with having the groundwork prepared. So how do you see the role of media uh, in highlighting such issues? Because uh, we have seen that the traditional media, the private media is not coming up to the expectations what the issues actually confronting to Pakistan. The current times is of media times. I think there is no other, uh, you know, Thing, uh, uh, angle to look at the things when it comes to media's importance, be it reg uh, uh, media or the social media. And uh, very, you are very right that media's role is the third. Now it's the fourth pillar of a state. Without media's support and raising voices, things uh, will not go in the right direction. I'll also, add the academia and think tanks because you belong <laughs> to that. But they have the responsibility as well. And, uh, when it comes to academia and think tanks, I think they are they are doing their job pretty well. 
be it the uh, private media, uh, private think tanks or the public sector uh, 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 think tanks or the uh, private uh, ac uh, academia or the public sector academia. Um, you, ha you, you have seen number of you know conferences, seminars and the events at media, uh, uh, at think tanks and uh, in academia. Scholars are writing a lot uh, on the concerned subjects on writing non-traditional security threats, human security, non-traditional security threats water issues, climate issues, uh, we have number of experts on that and they are doing their part very well. But when it comes to media and the state, uh, the concerned officials, I think we need to be more uh, thank you very much about for, it. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, kind participation. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Vaseen. Thank you very My much. Saira, thank you very much. My so pleasure. nice of you for, to both of you for being with us here in the studios. Uh, uh, viewers, uh, as uh, our panelists uh, suggested, and uh, most of the experts believe that uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan must have to engage with each other uh, to resolve these water issues. And the question of India must have to be addressed uh, in between both the countries because uh, that is again a linchpin uh, between both the countries and that is going to ruin uh, the relations, uh, uh, bilateral relations between Kabul and Islamabad. And uh, international power, especially uh, the stakeholder uh, in Pakistan and also in Afghanistan, the China. China is going to be a lead negotiator uh, and uh, to resolve this water issue uh, between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Both, of the, uh, both countries have to think that it is the matter of uh, millions of humans uh, on both sides of the border and it is the question of economy, it is the question of survivor, uh, survival and uh, the social protection in between and the river flows uh, guarantee uh, that protection on both sides of the uh, border and uh, we have to think about that uh, diplomacy must have to be given a chance. Negotiation is going to resolve all these issues rather than creating some sort of a conflicting uh, situation in between. So this is uh, today's foresight uh, and uh, uh, it's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz Al